Under the veil of a star-studded sky as the last echoes of Garrett's story faded into the night, an unlikely pact was formed. Rhodey, the interdimensional hound, and Garrett, the wayward warrior, found their fates intertwined in the most curious of circumstances. As different as two beings could be, and yet each found a kindred spirit in the other, bound by the fabric of their shared mission. Garrett extended a weathered hand to Rhodey, his eyes reflecting the solemnity of the agreement. I've seen more battles than I can remember, Rhodey, he said, his voice barely more than a whisper. But this, this feels different. More than just another war to win, this is about balance. Rhodey looked up at the warrior, his canine eyes shimmering with the reflection of countless stars. His tail, always expressive of his emotions, gave a solemn wag as he responded, I'm just a dog, Garrett, but if I've learned anything from chasing my tail, it's that balance is everything. In that moment, a peculiar energy seemed to ripple between the warrior and the hound. It was as though the universe itself had recognized the significance of this covenant, sending a shiver through the vast expanses of time and space. The pair, so mismatched and yet oddly aligned, set forth on a journey that promised peril at every turn. They navigated the realm under the silver glow of the moon, traversing ancient forests whispered with magic and crossing tumultuous rivers where water spirits danced. Every step they took seemed to stir the pulse of the land like a drumbeat growing steadily louder, heralding the arrival of an approaching storm. Chapter 4 Their voyage to the Citadel of Shadows was a pilgrimage of extraordinary proportions. They trod a path less traveled, journeying through the arteries of the realm. Rhodey, the interdimensional canine, and Garrod, the warrior with silver tresses, embarked on a course strewn with unpredictable wonders and insurmountable perils. The forest they traversed was a breathing entity of its own, its verdant expanse teeming with the size of unseen denizens. Vines clung to the towering trunks of ancient trees, like the entwined fingers of lovers while the luminous eyes of secretive creatures blinked in the undergrowth, casting an eerie glow beneath the leafy canopy. Their footsteps on the soft carpet of fallen leaves created rhythmic whispers, intermingling with the distant echo of predatory growls. As they forged through the dense woodland, Rhodey cocked his head, a low growl rumbling in his throat. Does it sound like the forest is whispering, or is that just me? He asked his eyes gleaming with a mixture of intrigue and trepidation. Garrett, his hand instinctively resting on the hilt of his blade, replied with a gruff chuckle, Even the trees have tales to tell, Rhodey. We just need to listen. Past the rustling leaves and towering pillars of the forest, the adventurers found themselves facing the untamed power of the realm's river systems. The rivers surged with the unbridled strength of nature, their courses carved deep into the earth's bosom over countless eons. Their roars were a mighty symphony that resonated through the air, the sheer force of their flow commanding both awe and respect. Their waters were a brilliant crystal clear blue, so pristine that it was like staring into an unbroken mirror reflecting the sky. Beneath the shimmering surface, ethereal forms glided and twirled, their movements flowing as naturally as the river itself. These were the water spirits, custodians of the aquatic realm, their bodies rippling with a luminescence that seemed to draw from the moon itself. Each spirit was a mesmerizing entity. Their bodies were an ethereal blend of water and light, constantly shifting and changing, their forms more akin to liquid sculptures than solid flesh. They moved in an exquisite dance, a choreography that mirrored the river's rhythm and cadence. Their laughter rang like tinkling chimes, melodious and light, while their songs were hauntingly beautiful, a harmony that ebbed and flowed with the river's current. Curiosity shone brightly in their aquatic eyes, their gazes drawn to the sight of the odd pair crossing their domain. They would occasionally break away from their underwater revelry, rising to the surface in arcs of radiant droplets, their vibrant energy causing the water around them to come alive with brilliant rainbow-hued ripples. Their playful antics caused Rhodey's tail to wag excitedly, his canine interest piqued by these new, fascinating creatures. He leaned precariously over the river's edge, his gaze captivated by the water spirit's ballet. 
His ears perked up at their musical laughter and enchanting songs, his canine heart beating in rhythm with the river's symphony. Rody, remember to keep your distance, Garrett cautioned, his eyes never leaving the swirling spectacle of the spirits. They're enticing, no doubt, but their magic is potent. It's best not to underestimate them. The dog gave a soft bark of agreement, his tail wagging despite the warning. His eyes, filled with wonder, traced the ballet of the spirits as they twirled and dived beneath the river's surface. Leaving the rivers behind, they ascended mountains that stood as the realm's timeless sentinels. These majestic peaks, wreathed in clouds and crowned by snow, wore a stern gaze over the world below. The climb was treacherous, the biting cold gnawing into their bones, yet they pressed on, driven by their shared mission. From the forest's whispering veil to the river's enchanted waters and the mountain's icy embrace, every leg of their journey seemed drenched in potent raw magic, the kind the sorcerers harnessed. It was a realm unblemished by time, wild in its beauty, a testament to the unyielding dance of nature and magic, a symphony they were now part of. Their destination, the citadel, stood a mere silhouette against the horizon, but it was a beacon of hope and uncertainty their next step into a journey that was anything but mundane. Known among the natives as the Citadel of Shadows, stood with an ironclad resolve atop the most prominent peak. Its stark silhouette, rigid and unyielding, was etched against the vast expanse of the sky, like an ancient hieroglyph waiting to reveal its secret to any willing decipherer. It was as though the sky itself was an ephemeral canvas, displaying an array of hues with each passing hour, while the citadel stood its ground as the constant somber masterpiece. This place, Garrett gestured grandly towards the looming structure, has seen epics come and go, civilizations rise and fall, yet it has weathered it all. If these stones could speak, they'd tell tales that would fill a thousand scrolls. Awe etched on his canine face, Rody peered at the citadel, his gaze sliding over the weather-beaten ramparts and the spires reaching out to the heavens like skeletal fingers. I can almost feel it, all the magic. It's like the very air is buzzing. A ghost of a smile crossed Garrett's face. Yes, the citadel is a conduit, a channel for the raw magic of this realm. It is what makes the sorcerers who they are. This imposing fortress was a remnant of a time long past its stone veins pulsating with the age-old wisdom of the ages. It stood as an indomitable testament to resilience, the mortal enemy of the gnawing jaws of time and the cataclysms of war. The Citadel of Shadows was far more than mere stone and mortar. It was a silent guardian, a preserver of tradition, a home to those left behind by fate, and a sanctuary to those tasked with the immense responsibility of balancing the primal forces of this realm. As the pair approached, the citadel seemed to come alive, like a slumbering giant awakened. Ancient symbols etched into the dark stone pulsed with faint otherworldly light, an arcane language that seemed to dance and shiver. The air around the citadel tasted of magic and an odd metallic tang, as if even the very elements recognized the authority this stronghold commanded. Rody took a tentative step, his paw landing on the stone path that led to the citadel's entrance. A shiver ran through him, like a stray note vibrating on a cosmic string. It was a feeling of coming home, yet being on the edge of an enigma. He turned to Garrod, his eyes mirroring his excitement and uncertainty. As they stepped into the Citadel's great hall, Garrod turned to Rhodey, a mischievous gleam dancing in his hardened warrior eyes. Prepare to meet the family, he said, a grim smile playing on his lips. The room was expansive with towering columns of stone supporting a ceiling lost in shadows. Torches flickered like restless spirits, casting an eerie glow that danced upon the stern faces of the assembled sorcerers. Garrett led Rody forward, his boots echoing in the cavernous space, each step sounding like a proclamation of their arrival. At their entrance, the hum of conversation ceased, replaced by a palpable wave of surprise and intrigue. All eyes were drawn to the sight of the interdimensional canine standing resolute beside Garrod. A ripple of whispers washed over the crowd like a gust of wind through a field of ripe grain. Rody could hear fragments. A dog? Did it just speak? Enter what now? 
Among the crowd, sorcerers of all ages and appearances scrutinized him. There was an elderly man, his white hair cascading down to his waist like a waterfall of moonlight, his fingers swirling with sparks of magic. Beside him stood a tall woman, her auburn hair ablaze against her tanned skin, eyes like twin sapphires studying Rhodey with guarded curiosity. A young lad barely out of his teens, his face marred with the traces of early battles, bore an expression of astonishment that mirrored Rhodey's own feelings. Garrett cleared his throat, breaking the momentary silence. Meet Rhodey, he began, his voice echoing in the stone-cold silence. A dog, yes, but also an explorer from another universe. He paused, allowing the information to sink in. He has shown courage and resilience, qualities we value, and he is here to help. Rhodey felt dozens of eyes boring into him, the weight of their gazes heavy with both skepticism and curiosity. He straightened, meeting their stares with determination shining in his own canine eyes. Despite the strangeness of his current predicament, a surge of hope filled him. The sorcerers were strange, no doubt, but also strikingly similar to him in their uniqueness. An elderly sorceress stepped forward, her wizened face creased into a warm smile. We welcome you, Rhodey, the talking dog of another universe. You are a peculiar surprise, but in a world filled with wyverns and specters, we're no strangers to peculiarities. Laughter echoed through the hall, cutting through the tension like a silver blade through darkness. The sorcerers, each uniquely distinguished by their skills and persona, began to approach Rhodey, their expressions shifting from intrigue to acceptance. With each dawn, the Citadel of Shadows pulsed with new energy, a rhythm so ancient and profound that Rhodey felt it in his bones, an undercurrent to his every thought and action. Garrod and the sorcerers began his education in earnest, their lessons stretching from the glimmering sunrise to the hush of twilight. Within the solemn refuge of the Citadel, Rhodey began to perceive the universe in a manner he had never before experienced. The hallowed halls and chambers, laden with centuries-old magic, became his classrooms. There, in the timeless stone and air, the teachings of the sorcerers took root, guiding him towards an understanding of this mystical realm's intricate fabric. His senses, once suited to a dog's life on Earth, transformed. The very air around him pulsed with invisible threads of magic, a symphony of energy that filled the citadel. These threads twined and wove around him, caressing him with their silent whispers of primal power, beckoning him to reach out, to learn their ancient dance. He found himself attuned to the citadel's heartbeat, the steady rhythmic thrumming that resonated through the stone beneath his paws. Every granite block, every sculpture, every arcane sigil etched into the walls was alive with magic. The citadel was not just a place. It was a living, breathing entity, humming with untold stories and forgotten spells. Rhodey began to understand the language of the elements, which was not conveyed in words, but in sensations, rhythms, and emotions. The wind was a carefree spirit, its whispers carrying tales from distant lands, its touch as gentle as a loving caress or as sharp as a warrior's blade. Fire was an energetic dance, a crackling crescendo of joy and destruction, warmth and danger. The earth's sigh was a song of ages, a gentle lullaby humming with patience and wisdom, the scent of rich soil and fresh rain. Water, the murmur of life, ebbed and flowed with emotions, reflecting the world's joys and sorrows in its shimmering depths. Garrett guided Rhodey through these lessons, a stern yet patient mentor. Don't just listen, he would advise. Feel, understand. Each element has a spirit, a voice. They're part of this world, part of its magic, and now they are a part of you. Day by day, Rhodey learned to weave these threads of magic to coax the elements into heeding his call. It was a dance as old as the universe itself, a harmony of energies, a balance of forces. His own power the strange and wonderful ability to traverse the multiverse, intertwined with the elemental magic, creating a tapestry of power that was as unique as it was potent. Rhodey was not just learning the language of this world, he was adding his own verse to its timeless song. Every creature, every stone, every breath of wind holds magic, Garrod told him during one of their countless sessions. Understanding it, respecting it, that's the first step. 
Harnessing his unique abilities was a different beast altogether. Rhodey's inherent power to traverse the multiverse was something the sorcerers had never encountered before. They took on this challenge with a mix of fascination and caution, for they were treading on grounds unknown. There were trials and errors. Some days were triumphant. Rhodey managed to channel his power and blend it with the magic of this world. But other days were laden with frustration when all attempts seemed futile. The sorcerers watched with awe as Rhodey's power unfurled. They glimpsed distant galaxies in his eyes, felt the subtle tremors of unseen worlds vibrating in his presence. It was a confluence of magic they had never imagined, the multiverse meeting the ancient power of their realm. Rhodey's eyes would often glow with an otherworldly luminescence, shimmering portals hinting at the numerous realities he could touch. And as the lessons continued, he learned to pull threads from this intricate tapestry, combining the energy of the multiverse with the elemental magic of the sorcerers. Concentrate, Rhodey, Garrod would often command, his eyes filled with stern concern. Feel the energy within you. Feel it respond to your will. Bind it with the magic of this world. Let them sing together. The citadel was much more than mere stone and mortar. It was a vast reservoir of ancient wisdom, a silent guardian of the secrets of the realm. At its heart, within the towering spires and shadowy corridors, lay the library. A repository of arcane knowledge, the library was a treasure trove that could make any scholar or sorcerer's heart skip a beat. Rhodey, ever the curious hound, found himself irresistibly drawn to it. It was here, amidst the musty scent of parchment and the soft whisper of turning pages, that he embarked on a different kind of journey. Here you are, dog, Garrett remarked one day, finding Rhodey in the library. His gruff voice echoed through the cavernous space, bouncing off the high vaulted ceiling and tall bookshelves. I thought I'd find you sniffing around the kitchen, not nose deep in tomes older than most sorcerers here. Rhodey glanced up from a hefty tome, a mischievous twinkle in his eyes. And miss out on stories about Blix the Salamander who once swallowed the moon, or the ghost griffin of Gorgoroth? I think not. Garrod's laughter resonated through the library. Rhodey joined in, the two sharing a moment of camaraderie amidst a sea of ancient lore. As days turned into weeks, Rhodey found himself immersed in texts about magical properties of flora and fauna, enigmatic scrolls detailing mystical rituals, and elaborate maps of the cosmos, resonating with magical ley lines. He became fluent in understanding the complex symbology and arcane language that each text offered. In the cavernous chambers of the citadel, where shadows held ancient secrets and whispers of the past, the undercurrent of Rhodey's training was an unspoken knowledge of the looming threat. The sorcerers, with their mystical acumen, sensed a disquiet in the magical fabric of their world. It was an unease that held a name, a name they muttered with a mix of respect and fear, Seraphina. Seraphina was a name that echoed in the ethereal passages of the citadel, slipped into hushed conversations, and stirred disquiet among the sorcerers. A powerful mystic with an ambition as vast as the universe itself, she was a force that did not merely exist, but resonated with the raw, untamed power of the mystical realms. One day, he encountered an ancient parchment labeled the Codex of Cosmic Confluence. This text, brimming with enigmatic diagrams and cryptic verses, spoke about the laws governing multidimensional magic. It was complex and arduous, yet it held a mesmerizing allure for the interdimensional canine. Rhodey found himself engrossed in the Codex for days, his eyes reflecting the candlelight that flickered over the ancient parchment. The more he delved into it, the more he began to see patterns and similarities with his own dimensional abilities. Still at it, Rhodey? Garrod asked one evening, finding the dog lost in his study. Rhodey looked up, his eyes weary but determined. There's something in here, Garrod, a connection. I believe this could help us, help me control my powers better, maybe even defeat Serafina. In the heart of the citadel, amidst the library's ancient wisdom, Rhodey had found something more than just tales of the realm's history and its magic. He had discovered a beacon of hope, a guide to mastering his powers and securing their world from the looming peril. This was not just a chapter in a book, it was a crucial chapter in his extraordinary journey. 
The citadel, though drenched in magic and tradition, was not simply a fortress of stone or a repository of knowledge. Its true essence lay in the pulse of camaraderie that beat within its walls, a rhythm that grew stronger with every passing day of Rhodey's stay. Rhodey, the interdimensional canine from a realm far removed from this mystical universe, found in the citadel something more profound than mere acceptance. He found companionship, a band of warriors whose resilience echoed his own, whose laughter rang through the silent corridors, breaking the monotony of training and study. Garrod, the stoic warrior with silver tresses, proved to be more than just a guide. As they sparred in the courtyard, wrestled with arcane texts and swapped tales beneath the star-studded sky, a bond forged in the crucible of their shared journey deepened. It was a bond that transcended dimensions, stronger than the magic that coursed through the realm. The dog and the warrior, an odd pairing indeed, but in the heart of the citadel, it felt as natural as the sun's rise. You know, Rhodey, Garrett remarked one evening, a rare smile dancing on his lips, I never thought I'd see the day where I'd be sharing a flask of elderflower brew with a dog. Rhodey's response was a soft bark of laughter, the sound echoing through the stone chamber. And I never thought I'd find a warrior who appreciates a good scratch behind the ears as much as I do, he retorted, his eyes twinkling with mirth. Beyond the friendship with Garrod, Rhodey also found companions in the other sorcerers of the Citadel. Each one was a story unto themselves, warriors and scholars who welcomed the peculiar canine with open arms. There was wise old Thorian with his endless tales, Quill with his sharp wit, and Magnus with his stoic kindness. These friendships, born from shared meals, huddled discussions around crackling fires and grueling training sessions, created a tapestry of companionship that warmed Rhodey's heart. It was in these moments, amidst laughter and tales, that Rhodey truly felt at home in the Citadel, a feeling that eclipsed the foreignness of the world outside. As Rhodey delved deeper into the magic of this realm, his inherent abilities began to evolve, intertwine, and take on an unexpected form. He discovered a unique form of magic, one that seamlessly blended his innate power of multidimensional traversal with the raw energy of the realm. It began one night under the luminous glow of the twin moons. Rhodey was perched on a rocky outcrop, peering into the depthless abyss of the night sky, a sky that reminded him of the countless realities beyond this realm. He felt the pulse of the universe within him, resonating with the subtle thrum of magic that vibrated from the heart of the citadel. Without warning, an incandescent spark erupted at the tip of Rhodey's tail, so sudden and vibrant it seemed to set the night aglow. The sensation was a curious combination of warmth and electricity, as if a storm were brewing within him. It darted through him, a rogue comet on a journey through the cosmos of his being, igniting constellations of sensation as it blazed a trail from his tail to the crown of his head. As this sensation pulsed within him, his eyes, the windows to his cosmic soul, underwent a startling transformation. No longer were they merely mirrors reflecting the light of distant realities. They were gateways. His gaze was an intense beam of luminescence that cut through the obsidian night, drawing threads of energy from every reality his mind had touched. They whirled around him, an aurora of impossible colors and patterns, turning the quiet night into a cosmic light show. At that moment, the very fabric of the realm came alive. It was as if the very elements themselves had sensed this new, unfathomable power within Rhodey. The wind around him rustled with newfound vigor, whispering in ancient tongues, sharing the secrets of realms it had caressed. The earth beneath his paws vibrated, trembling with a primal energy that echoed the rhythm of his heartbeat. Fireflies in the distance responded to his energy, their bodies crackling and glowing with a strange fervor. Even the nearby stream was not immune to this enchantment, its surface rippling, murmuring tales of far-off lands it dreamt of reaching. The world was in symphony with Rhodey, every note, every tremble echoing his inner transformation. This was more than magic. This was a birth of a new cosmic harmony, an unanticipated fusion of the ancient powers of the realm with the celestial rhythm of the multiverse, all converging within a single extraordinary being. Garrod! Rhodey yelped, both alarmed and awestruck. 
Garrett appeared, his eyes wide in the moonlight. What is it, Rody? he asked, his voice cautious. I, I'm not sure. Rody hesitated, struggling to make sense of the energy surge within him. But I feel different, like I've touched something, something new. The Citadel reverberated with their combined magic, creating a symphony of otherworldly harmonies. Rhodey's multiverse power entwined with the sorcerer's spells, their resonance creating an enchanting fusion. It was as though a new magic was being born, the combination of Rhodey's natural abilities and the realm's magic intertwining, creating a powerful force that rippled through the very fabric of their universe. Garrod, ever the observant mentor, sensed the change in Rhodey. He saw the way the elements danced around him, felt the ripple of different realities emanating from his presence. You found it, he said, his voice filled with reverence. You found a way to intertwine your innate power with our magic. As Rhodey learned to control this newfound magic, he became the epitome of convergence, a being capable of harmonizing the chaos of the multiverse with the steady rhythm of magic. This new form of magic was like a symphony, a perfect blend of notes and rhythms, both chaotic and harmonious, each enhancing the beauty of the other. It was a power the sorcerers had never dreamed of, a testament to Rhodey's extraordinary journey in a realm not his own. In the grand halls of the Citadel, amidst the rustling whispers of ancient lore and the steadfast camaraderie of the sorcerers, Rhodey had uncovered a magic entirely his own, carving out a place for himself in this strange, beautiful world.